Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. So question, what motivates you? What are your dreams? What gets you closer to them? What do you really want in life? What's your motivation? We're going to put that through a, call it a special filter to see if it really is authentic or if it's your ego talking. What do you want these things in life? Whether they're things or people, all the same thing. He is going to help us out with that. He's an amazing men's transformational coach. Joshua Long is back with us. How's it going today, Josh? It's going good. How are you doing? Good, good. Great to have you here. Uh, I'm intrigued. I, I, you just mentioned the the filter that mm-hmm. this goes through, and I believe this is going to be an eye opener for a lot of us once mm-hmm. we start thinking of it in a different way in terms of what our motivations are. And I think about it for a second. Every moment of every day, there's a motivation. What are we doing? Why are we doing mm-hmm. it? There's something there. Would you Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hmm. Attachment of some kind. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to ride loose on that attachment word to see if it applies to things in my brain. <laughs> you know, like in my mind, I give examples, you know, what, what do you attach to? What do you want? Um, how about you give some examples? What do you got? Yeah. So I think we've discussed in the past. So if anybody hasn't seen the past, we've, you know, have the past episodes, which like Steve has said, we've, kind of went through layers of this so definitely go back and look at the past episodes but we've spoken about how we can attach our identity and a big one that i always use in this one is like mothers with their children um they, it's kind of like things outside of us and where we're trying to seek purpose on um, where we're trying to like find ourselves we we give ourselves a false attachment to something that fills us up um but just like mothers, once, you know, the kids get 18 and they're out of the house, empty nest, you know, then a lot of like women are asking themselves like, oh, who am I um, to bring that over to the men? A lot of men put this like and I understand in the in the in a masculine energy, if that's the core energy for for that man, a lot of times there's that attachment to work because the masculine energy needs purpose. And so the family and their job becomes their identity and it fills that sense of purpose but then on the contrary there's all you know because it's not really filling you up it's a temporary fill there's always kind of that um depressed in the back which you know or coming home and being tired all the time like we mentioned last episode or maybe becoming Mm. a drinker or angry so it is filling you up so the identity of that man is attached to his job um and being a provider Um, And so that's where, so what we're going to, what I want to kind of break down today is more so the motivation, not necessarily tying the the depth of the identity, um, but little things that we use to kind of like, what's the motivation behind, like we discussed in the last episode with pride, what is the motivation behind that getting a big, big home, getting a bigger home or having the nice car? So that's kind of what I wanted to break down today and getting, like I always say, get curious. Why am I doing this? And then that's where we will find more answers when you're honest with self. And sometimes it takes time because you got to get quiet with self, drop into the body and really accept why am I doing this? Like you said, maybe it's just to be loved or feel loved by friends. And so maybe you're that yes man. You know, that says yes to everybody because you just want to feel love. So what's really motivating you always saying yes to people? I'm trying not to do that. Yeah, it's <laughs> hard. Sure. Oh, oh, my God. I was just texting with a bunch of friends and uh, <laughs> I got another night. This weekend, there's a full moon and mm-hmm. they were writing in a, in a group chat. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I want to um, I want to do that moonlight kayaking. And I like to go kayaking. Haven't gone yet this year, but I'm that I was thinking about going that night. And one of my friends is like, Can I borrow one of your kayaks? Well, on the side here, I'm not really sure who I'm going with. <laughs> like, like you're just asking me now. I don't know. I said, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Normally I'm like, Yeah, sure, you can borrow it, but you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm usually that person that just says yes. I don't know. I just like to make everybody happy. But why do we do it? 
Why do we right. want that car? Why do we want that house? Many people will turn around and say, well, because I deserve it. I, I just want it. Mm -hmm. Is it true that there's a reason there's always a reason behind it? I mean, I won't say always. I will say majority of the time, yes. Um, and it kind of like when I go through these things, and the reason I I did want to circle back around to this is because we do harp on a lot of like when do you want the new house? Why do you want the new house and these materialistic things? And I, and I don't want to give off the wrong impression um, of men or individuals thinking at all that those things can't exist in authenticity sure. because they, they can. Um, but like you said, you know, I just I always say, yes, I want to make people happy. That's where you get curious. You know, why do you want to um, for people that might struggle with that same concept, um, which is more codependency, people pleasing, if you want to go down that rabbit hole. Why do I want to make everybody happy? You know, and it, when you really sit with that, what would what co would come up? Um, I've already I've sat with it. I mm -hmm. derived what I believe is the answer in my situation. Um, always want to be liked. I was bullied when I was younger, so I and just some of the reasons. So I I feel that's you know value. You always want to bring value. Yeah, yeah, I can do that for you. I got that. I got that. Uh, but then you need to after a time of giving of yourself realize like well wait a minute what's what what's it for me mm -hmm. like, not what's in it but how does it serve me to ask that question kind of reframe it and then that kind of gets you back to why are you doing it when you sit with self exactly so what i mean what i heard you say is i i i do everything for people because i i want to be accepted you know, and that that would kind of be like the core. So when people when you guys go down this rabbit hole, you find out where that belief is coming from. And now you can see that you're trying to get acceptance from outside of you. And then that's really where that spirituality practice and inner child work comes in, because what you realize is that everything that I need, I can give myself. And so now in that journey of healing, you're able to. And, it, it, and it's like a a spectrum like as that energy is coming back into yourself your cup is getting full so then that you're able to start saying no even though you're going to go through that phase of like that guilt um of saying no because it's out of your whole you no know, pattern of protection mm -hmm. um you'll start to say no more um and you'll feel that as you're as you're filling yourself up more that no becomes more comfortable as you're drawing that energy back in and that's where you find that wholeness from within yourself and now moving forward, you can you can show up more authentic and say yes when I really mean it and out of fear of not. And I can say no, because if they get mad or they get triggered from my no and by setting that boundary, that's on them. And not to say exactly. that you can't feel that compassion and love for them, kind of like what you mentioned with a person a couple of weeks ago that wanted to stay over, but there was a plan and they wanted to stay longer. You know, it's a no. So now that's on them. And boundaries are great because that's then shows us who's meant to be in our life and why they say you lose a lot of people. Um, and that's kind of where it, where it goes. But mm -hmm. I always so when you mentioned the filter in the beginning of this, I always ask myself in this journey of getting curious, am I doing this out of fear or fantasy um, to kind of decipher is this authentic or is it not? Um, and when we say not, that's just saying that it's coming from that false self, ego, in which we've talked about a lot of times. And most of the time, even the fantasy side of it, it's mostly all fear because ego, like we've discussed, false self is based in fear. Um, but when I say fear, that's like fear that's coming from that false belief from the past. So like not being accepted. So I'm I'm saying yes all the time, people pleasing. But why, when you ask yourself, why am I, why, what do I want out of this? Or what am I getting out of this? I'm getting acceptance. So that means it's coming from a place of fear that fear. if I don't, I'm not accepted. How do you define fantasy? Because so, both don't sound like they're, they're that fantastic. You know, coming from a place of fear, you don't want to be there. Coming from right. a place of fantasy doesn't even seem real. Like what, why, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And that's really past and future. Like we've discussed, you're either you're living from the past or you're living in the future. Fear okay. is past. 
future is fantasy. So if it's like we go to like wanting, you know, the new nice car, you know. Um, sure. So that's a fantasy because it's something um, ahead of us. So I'm fantasizing about having the new car because then, which we'll just say, for example, if I get the new car, I'll be accepted. Oh, <laughs> now we're back to fantasy. I'm sorry, fear. Fear. So that's what I'm saying. It's it's always going to come back to fear in the in the, at the core of it. But looking at it, it's a fantasy for a new car. So it's future um, because that ego is like in the future. If I get the new car, I'll be accepted, which realistically is still a fear because the fear is of not being accepted. So with all of this, let, let's now let's let's change this potentially around a little different. Mm -hmm. You want that new car. You're thinking about getting the model car that you had years ago. You had it when you were way younger. You you were lucky enough to have a sports car, and it's changed over the years. But you're thinking about getting a car like that again. It just made you feel good. You just loved the technology. You just you know, it felt good. Is it coming from a place of fantasy or fear? Mm -hmm. And I mean that's something I can't answer. Okay, for because that's individual. Now, for me, hearing you say that definitely sounds like there's more of an authenticity to it, um, because that almost sounds almost kind of like honoring of true self, honoring that inner child's yeah. like, love yeah. Hot Wheels, love to yeah. build cars. Right. Rem reminiscent of a time, yeah. you know, gone by. However, when you think a little bit deeper into it, why do most people like sports cars? And, and drop some good change on it and get a, you know, really cool car because they want to be noticed. Mm -hmm. Why, do, why do they want to be noticed? Right. <laughs> We're back to the fear again. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Can, can it be, um, can it be both? Like in, in that, in this scenario, getting a car you had when you were way younger and everything we're looking at here, can it also be, all right, so maybe it's 25% fear, but it's really 75% of fantasy. It's authentic. You want to kind of, you know, not a midlife crisis. I'm not going there at all with that. It's more of a, you know, I appreciated it back then and, and it's time for me to get a car and I can afford one. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get the sports car, but I don't know what, to, I don't know what I want, but I really mm -hmm. did like that one back in the day. Um, so it's more like 75% authentic fantasy, 25% fear. Can it, can it be like that as well? Yeah. I mean, so when you're saying authentic, so you, it's, you're saying, can it be like a little bit of fear, authentic? fear, authentic with a little bit of fear. Got it. Yeah. I think it, I think it absolutely can, but Me I too. think, and that's just kind of getting quiet when you're, even when you're like thinking about getting this car with yourself, you know, is the, is there that little voice of like, Oh, I can't wait to show somebody. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. Cause that's the validation. And I think that authenticity, our egos do need some healthy validation, you know, but that's why you have that close group of people that you really give your trust to, that you are vulnerable with, that will validate you. Um, so I would say, yes, it absolutely can be, you know, 75 authentic, and maybe there's a 25% fear. But if, if you, if you're, if you get the car, you know, what's your motive? Like, it's one of those things, you know, how they, how we always hear, like the more someone brags about it, you know, it's more, you can tell it's an insecurity. So it's one of those things. If you notice yourself, okay, walking around telling like friends and everybody all the time, like, oh, I'm thinking about getting this car. Oh, I'm get, thinking about getting this car. Pay attention to how much you're doing it. If you're doing it excessively, it's more fear. And we all know mm -hmm. that. You know, the more you brag, the more it's an insecurity. Sure. You're, you're trying to convince yourself um, or create the outcome that you want from it. Hmm. But if it's one of those things where like you have a group of like four best buds and you're like, oh, hey, guys, like I'm thinking about getting this car. And regardless of even if they say don't do it, you you will still do it. Because it's for you. That would be more authentic. You There's no attachment to anybody else's opinion because Steve wants it. Right. Yep. And, 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 and that would be the most authentic way. 
and you've already thought it out and this is this is why you want it because it mm-hmm. it brings back memories whatever it might be and i'm not again i'm not talking about a midlife crisis you know somebody you know the, the older guy getting the uh the camaro you know i'm just i've, I've given an example we talked about a car um what your motivation would be for a vehicle um but i gotta believe if anybody that gets a higher priced vehicle i gotta believe there's always there's a portion there that they want to get noticed i'm just mm-hmm. saying and then if that is true which i i believe it it is okay why and that gets us back to the fear the fear or, or the fantasy that yeah. ends up back at fear yes sure and, yeah. and all of this we're not saying that this is bad this is just the way it is right, right? and it's all variable too you know so sure. someone like me and you know where i'm at in my like you know life at this point you know to me that brand new car so it's all based on the means of our lifestyle too sure so like to me like just getting a new like hyundai is like whoa you know that's like a new car but to someone that's built a life that has like you know just financially extremely successful my hyundai is equivalent to their porsche you know, so yep. what, and then from, it depends on what perspectives looking at it, sure. you know, so I'm looking at it. I'm thinking there, there, maybe there's that attachment because it's a nicer car, but in their reality, that Porsche is equivalent to my Hyundai. It's not. So it all depends on the perspective you're, you're receiving from your reality, looking at somebody else's reality. Isn't it amazing that as time goes on, a lot of our perceptions, perceptions change because I look at that Hyundai my friend has one and I'm like, I, I'm, I, I, I'd be great with that. That is just the technology, the way it looks, the status thing just all goes away after time. Like mm-hmm. you don't, you don't care, but maybe, and that's just my thinking. Would I still buy a sports car at this point? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know, okay. but the Hyundai's fine. <laughs> it's like, I, I said to my friend, I envy your vehicle. It's, it's actually, I can't find fault with it. You know, that everything, it works great. And the technology is fantastic. Um, but maybe that's getting in touch with one's authentic self. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I say all this, you know, I know we're about the end. So I really say this to everybody because I want everybody to really realize, I know that like in our last episode, we were talking about pride and, you know, we, we kind of be on, you know, the big house, the car, the material things, you know, and how there's always this like negative attachment to it. And I really just want to put it out there that there it both can exist. Authenticity and a nice house and a nice car can still exist. Sure. I don't want people to beat themselves up just because like they're thinking like, oh, maybe I'm doing this falsely. Now, I would encourage you to look at it definitely <laughs> to see if there is. Yeah. But I want people to know that you can have a big house and be authentic. Um, so it's kind of like even going back to the, the midlife crisis is what we call it to me, that, um, guy that's retired now it, to me, him getting that car in that moment, I feel like it's actually more authentic. I think he's just, we we've known him in a reality where work has became his identity. Cause as we get older, we do step into our authentic selves more. So that yeah. whole, I don't care what people think. So even at the end of his life, he got that new car. He probably don't care. It probably is really authentic. He don't care what people thinks. He's realized his whole life has been about making money that now he realizes late in life doesn't mean anything. And so now he's like, I'm going to go spend this money because he's lost that. That ego's kind of dropped later in life. It's kind of come to the point where it's like, dang, I've lived my whole life, which is that regret feeling. So he, that older man may be in that feeling of regret because now it's so late in his life where he's retired, he's worked his life away, he's in regret and he's trying to make up for that feeling of regret by getting in that nice car. Because I can almost guarantee that older man, he don't care what his friends think. He wants that car because he wants that car. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know? But but I still believe that there is a portion of anybody that gets a, uh, call it a sports yeah. car, if you will, that hey, there's a piece of it that they want to get noticed and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. However, Mm -hmm. where's it coming from? It's usually fear-based. And I can transparently tell you, you know, on the house side, 
I sold a house two years ago, exactly two years ago. Um, and I renovated the backyard and just like turned it into something really cool. Uh, why? Hmm. Why? And if I look at it in hindsight, I would say 30 something percent was fear. Exactly right. what we're talking about. I would say that a yeah, maybe 25% after that was I wanted to share it. It was like the party house. We all came together. It was, you know, mm -hmm. I love tropical. I made palm trees in the backyard. I mean, nothing new for you. You're in Florida, but you know, up here. <laughs> I, I created it. But the rest of it, when I look back, it was to prove to myself that I could pull it off. Yeah. It was to prove because I I <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Mm -hmm. I gave myself an ulcer. I'm not kidding. Um, but I did it. And I can look back and say, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I came, I conquered, and I did it. Um, but it's interesting when we start looking at the fear of fantasy and really get deep with, within ourselves, mm -hmm. what comes out of that? Our motivation. Yeah. What what is our motivation when you sit deep with it and be real? <laughs> you know? Be real. You have to be real. So get the answer. Real. Gotta be yeah. real. Yeah. yeah. And I've, I've thought about that, the house thing. Um, and it, uh, you know, because we started talking about a house and that's it for me. You know, it's very, it's very clear for me what it was, but the fear based is um, wanting to show others that, you know, I got have it wanted to show, you know, that, um, <clears throat> you know, all of that, what, what are fear connected being, you know, accepted, connected, whatever it might be. Um, but the rest of it was just, proving it to myself that I could do it. So, and that's beautiful. Cause to me, there was a fear there that maybe doubted yourself if you could do it. So that, that fear was, well, really you know what? Thank you for saying that because I didn't think of it that way. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You because walk into resistance. And I, I always did. tell people, when you feel resistance, walk through it, guaranteed promise you every time on the other side is growth. So your ego was doubting self. Oh, maybe I can't do this backyard. Maybe it's too much for me. You're right. You're self resistance. Right. You walked through it and you grew. And now you put more, you instilled more like trust in yourself through that process. Totally. And like totally. self strength. So that is beautiful. That, may, that process there, it was healing. In you. many different areas. You're hundred percent right. Wow. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> give yourself kudos. That's what he does. Uh, there was a fear there, right? But you yeah, yeah. It was an internal fear with self. For sure. Yeah. Um, how do we find you? Somebody wants to uh unpack this, make these realizations. What's your website? Yeah, so you can find me on all social media platforms at Coach Joshua Long. Uh, you can send me a direct email at transformation at joshualongcoaching.com, or you can go directly to my website at www.joshualongcoaching.com, J-O-S-H-U-A-L-O-N-G, coaching.com. Always great talking with you. I love how you laser. You make it so clear. Um, and the aha moments <laughs> that come out. And I'm sure that, you know, when you work with people, they, they see that too. Um, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks. it. Pleasure as always. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. 
We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.